So anyway, um, so yeah, you're, you're, you're here at Word, welcome to Word, Word West Orlando WordPress. Sorry, I'm stuttering today. Um, that's our Wi-Fi uh, here. And then at the bottom, there's a link where you can follow along on your own laptop or you can uh, download the presentation later. So that's available for you. Um, so my name is Rob Watson. I'm the CEO of webadextrous.com. It's a local web development agency specializing in WordPress. We do other stuff, but mostly WordPress. A um, little bit about me, um, I'm a transplant here, moved here in 2016, traveled the country with my family for about seven months. We left Chicago and just drove around and saw Orlando and said, we're always coming down here for vacation, we might as well move here. So that's what we did. Um, so we've, we've been here about three years. Um, so I love to cycle um, and I love to eat. So I'm half Lance Armstrong and half Shrek. This half is Lance, this half is Shrek. So. <laughs> That's why I chose this place, because there's a nice little restaurant right over there. Um, and I'm, the reason I'm wearing this shirt, um, I was promised there would be no math involved. I actually, it, I, it's a surprising thing about me. When I tell people I'm a computer programmer and I'm really bad at math, they kind of go, why would I hire you? Um, but it's true, I have a weird dyscalculia thing. It's kind of like dyslexia for math. And so it's kind of how I got into computers, because computers do all the work for me. And I just, you know. Makes sense, right? You know, so I've been programming since I was 13 years old. Um, so I've been doing this for a long time in various different languages and different incarnations of things. So been around a little bit. A little bit. Um, so anyway, um, trying to think what else I was going to mention. But I think that was it on that. So OK, so we'll move forward. So today's topic is choosing a WordPress theme and also how to make a child theme. And we'll discuss what a child theme is real quick in a minute. So starting out, we're going to cover where can I find high quality um, themes? How do I know whether a theme is high quality and meets standards and uh, you know, isn't compromised by any malware? Um, we'll talk about what I should look for as far as whether it will work for my needs now and in the future and not cause any problems. All right? And why should I pay for a theme when free ones are available? It's a very valid question. And finally, what is a child theme and why would I want one? All right, so the top three places to find high quality themes, and this is by no means the ultimate list. I mean, there's probably 20, 30, 40, 100, I don't know. There's just so many places you can get themes, but these are kind of the top three that a lot of people go to. So there's WordPress.org, ThemeForest.net, and Mojo WordPress Marketplace. So let's go through each one of those. So WordPress.org themes, they are free. But with free, you don't get support. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people, they can deal with that. Um, there is commercial ones as well. Um, those are supported, so you can get uh, some tech support with those. Um, they're easy to preview and activate. You can just preview them right inside of your WordPress dashboard. And you can activate them right within the WordPress dashboard, configure them how you like. Um, and as we'll learn later, you can, you can actually make them do completely your bidding and not have to worry about when you upgrade. So there's a ton of them. There's lots and lots of variety. Some of them are pretty old. Some of them are somewhat new. Uh, but there's always new ones rolling in. So you know, there's always something new out there that you can try. Um, so they have, an, uh, they have a filtering algorithm that allows you to kind of select um, you know, which, uh, which themes you want based on certain criteria. Um, but sometimes it's hard to find themes that kind of check all those boxes for you. So, you kind of have to you know, dig through and try a few at a time. Um, not all of those themes are going to be trustworthy, even though Automatic, the company that makes WordPress, they do have uh, you know, a vetting system. But occasionally, some do slip through that do have some malware or that aren't up to standards. Um, so you just kind of have to you know, caveat mTOR on that. So themeforest.net. Uh, there's thousands, uh, tens of thousands of, for, of themeforest.net themes. This is kind of where you're going to find the most variety of, of themes. Um, pretty much all of them are, you know, premium themes where you have to pay for them. Um, you can pay dollars for some of them. Just depends on the theme and how complicated it is and, and all those kinds of things. <clears throat> so there's a good range of prices, low to high. Um, you mostly get what you pay for, right? Uh, the more you pay, the better the theme is going to be. So. Uh, that's been kind of the general rule, but I've found a couple that are pretty good that are like 15, 20 bucks, so not too bad. Um, more of their themes are compatible with page builders like Divi or Beaver Builder or um, um, Elementor, 
Uh, I'm missing a couple there, but there's, there's a few others. But those are the big three. So they're more, more of their themes tend to be compatible with those page builder systems. Um, they have nice filters to kind of help narrow down your requirements. And I'll just show you an example of that real quick. So just click on that here. Pop open theme forest. My dog were here, he'd be all over this thing. <laughs> Every night he comes up to my bedroom and he's like, okay, time to play laser dad. And I'd go back and forth and he gets his <laughs> exercise and I don't. So, <laughs> so um, here you have down the side all of the different things that you can choose from. So you can start with e-commerce if you want to. Um, it looks like there's three themes. And then you've got, uh, you know, you can choose tags with e-commerce or blog or fashion. So there's always all, all different kinds of ways that you can narrow down by price, by feature, um, and those types of things. And then here you can kind of see a preview, uh, add to cart. This one's 60, 59, 49. So there's, there's like a ton of different ways to, to sort by. You got price, you got trending, best rated, newest, best sellers. So I like this, I like Theme Forest filters, yeah. Is that an annual price? Uh, some of them are one time, but most of them, most of them, you know, um, if you, you'll get like, you'll get like a, like I think a six month period of support and then you can extend that support for an extra 15 bucks or something like that. So each one of them is different. They all, they all have their own pricing on them. But yeah, I mean, you can, you can, uh, <clears throat> you can try each one of these and just see how, how it works for your site. And, um, this is, this is one of the more popular ones, so a lot of people will go to themeforest.net. I don't tend to go there as much because I, I, I tend to use Divi a lot more. So I like Divi because it lets me create my own setup the way I like it. Um, but some people like the comfort of just having a theme that's already been put together for them. So any questions? All right. Are you, are you mentioned about page builder. Yeah. Uh, they doesn't let you update the page builder. Yeah. Do you, do you remember the, the most famous one? Yeah, the one that I use, uh, it's really famous, is Divi, D-I-V-I. -I. Oh. And so it's, it's a theme that you install, but it's got special page builder features in it. Mm -hmm. So it has the basics of a theme, and then you can build your look and feel of every page exactly how you want it to be. So um, Elementor is another one, and Beaver Builder, and a few others. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you can use them separately. So you can use the Divi Builder component within one of these, um, but I tend to use the, both the Divi theme and the Divi Builder together. Just, you know, it just I feel like I have a lot more flexibility with that. Yeah. Yeah, my my partner who does for the front end, he uses Avada, which comes with. Yeah. 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 It it the the builders are meant to just make. Uh, page building a lot easier. It's drag and drop. You click on a, on a box and a thing pops up and says what options would you like and you can put in, you can put in CSS um, classes and IDs in there to really get down to the granular level of what you want to do. Sometimes you can write your CSS code directly in a little menu that pops up and, and uh, these things are pretty powerful. Um, it's kind of the way that WordPress is going in these page builders and much to the chagrin of the WordPress purists who don't like them. Um, but in some of the criticisms of Divi and Elementor and a few others is that they add page load time. You know, that kind of slows down your site to, you know, there's a lot of horror stories, but I've been able to get, you know, sub-second responses. If you keep your design simple and elegant um, and don't try to do too much, you know, you can keep the, the bloat down. So, but, and if you write your CSS correctly, you know, but. I know, I know in Nevada, yeah, I, I have that fear too with yeah. my partner, the front end guy, so yeah. <laughs> but you can, once you do it, you can turn off all the elements that you don't use yeah. to help make it more efficient. Yes, you turn off all the stuff you don't want. Um, and the other thing is hosting. Like people complain, you know, my, my you know, Divi's slow on my side. Well, that's because you have the cheap cut rate hosting. I, the first thing I tell all my clients is don't cheap out on hosting. Right. Pay $35 a month if you have to. <laughs> But pay, pay good money for good hosting because that'll solve a world of problems for you. It really is, yeah. Yep, any other questions? All right, we'll move forward. Um, so some of the vendors uh, uh, from ThemeForce are not so great at support, right? Um, you'll get a lot of them are from overseas, so you'll find a 24-hour support cycle. You put, you put in a ticket and then at three o'clock in the morning your phone goes ding and they're answering you from India, so. <laughs> Uh, and then you'll get up and, and answer them. And it's just, it, it can take seven days sometimes to get fully through a, a support cycle. 
Um, so if you can, find out where your theme is built and supported and try to get it in your hemisphere if you can. Makes things a lot easier for you. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, why isn't this? Oh, now it is. So Mojo Marketplace. I think I have bumped my screen. All right. Mojo Marketplace. It has fewer themes to have to wade through, so they're not as big, they're not as you know, much selection, but sometimes people don't want the huge selection. They want just a few that are good. So that's, this is kind of the middle of the road here. Um, you get the higher low prices, but the lower high prices. So you know, there's a little bit of a variation there on, on how the pricing works. Um, they do have a lot more flexible license plans than Theme Forest does, so, and some of the other ones as well. I kind of like that. Um, but not very many of those themes actually have reviews or ratings. There's like, most of them are like maybe two reviews, three reviews, but the rest don't have any. So I don't know if it's because they're new or people don't know about them and uh, you know, maybe they just need more, more traffic, but the themes are pretty good. Um, their filter works, but it's not as good as ThemeForce. ThemeForce has by far the best filter for what you're looking for. How do you know whether your theme is safe and standards-based? Now you could open the theme um, maybe just send it to a developer, have them look through it. You can look through it, you know, compare code and stuff like that. Who has that kind of time? I don't have that kind of time. So whenever I'm shopping for theme, for the theme check, and what this does is you can take your theme file. Let me just get my laser here. So you can take your theme file and uh, as a zip file and just upload it straight to there. Um, and then it will run a, a test and it will show you whether it has some serious issues, some warnings, and then what it's actually doing good. So it tells you all of the, all of the things that are going on there. Um, if you want to um, find out which themes are actually good to start out, you can actually look at the recently checked themes. What I like to do is go to the higher scores first, right here, and then I can see what are the best themes on the market, right? So if I'm looking for something that I know is gonna be right out of the gate fast, standard supported, no bugs, no malware, I can go to this view and just start picking whatever I want, okay? So when you, uh, when you click on one of these, obviously there's not much to show for a good theme. So the validation results are here. It'll tell you, you know, basic metadata about each of the themes. Um, you can download the theme if it's an open source theme. You can just grab it right there. Um, gives you some other check themes that are similar. Now if you end up Finding one that is kind of iffy. I'll see if I can drag one of those out. We'll go to higher scores first. And, oh, sorry, I meant to do, um, let's see, WordPress themes, newer first, there we go. All right, so newer first. Here's one that's a 78. It's, you know, kind of middle of the road ish. It's a C. Um, so right here it tells you. You know, you got your critical alerts, and it'll tell you, you know, registration of theme features, implementation of add theme support. So this is the kind of stuff that you send to your developer and say, is this bad? <laughs> right? But at least you know up front there's something that's probably not good. Now, some of these things, it depends on whether you care, right? Um, most of these themes are okay anyway. Um, but, you know, you want to check with the developer to find out whether this is an issue. And then there's uh, a set of warnings. You know, these are, these are not as critical, but they could cause a problem depending on what plugins you're running. You know, they could cause, cause a conflict with your plugins or other code that you put in there. And then here at the bottom, it gives you just some tips. You know, uh, really hard to read this. Let's see if I can control plus that a little bit. That's better. That's much better. So this will tell you possible hard-coded links were found in here. You know, and it just gives you a snippet of the code. Um, you know, just, just more stuff for your developer to look at and, and help you decide whether it's a good one. You know, you can, push, you can put this stuff out on the message boards as well and ask people. There's actually a, I don't know if you're familiar with Slack, I'll talk about that in a bit. It's basically a chat program for WordPress developers. You know, there's a channel in there for that. And you can go in there and join one of those Slack groups and ask questions. We have one of our own. So there's that. All right. Come on back. There we go. So themecheck.info, that's a great place to go to check out if your theme is any good. All right. 
So what you want to look for in a theme, you want to figure out what you want ahead of time. If you're doing e-commerce, obviously you're going to be looking for e-commerce themes. That's kind of the default that you're going to want to do there. If you try to go into an e-commerce situation with a regular theme, you're going to maybe you know have a little trouble. Yeah. Um, it doesn't it doesn't usually mean that. Usually it means like they've built it for WooCommerce, and maybe they'll have you know as part of the theme they'll include the plugin. But most times it's just the theme, and then you download the plugin and and, okay. and install it because they don't want to have to keep up with the latest version of the plugin every time they publish the theme. Um, so yeah, but you, you'll you'll find that some themes are made for WooCommerce, some are made for um, What's the other one? Presta Shop, I think, is another one. Um, but there was one that was actually was WooCommerce before WooCommerce was. I can't remember. J uh, Jingo Shop, Jigo Shop, something like that. It was the precursor to WooCommerce. But yeah, so they, you know, different ones, you know, different e-commerce systems. Um, if you want, if you're doing just pure blogging, there are themes out there that all they do is blogging. There's no page templates or anything. And there's other ones that have every kind of page template you could possibly imagine. You know, so you just got to figure out what you want ahead of time. That'll make it a lot easier to find what you're looking for. Um, talk to a developer, see what they recommend. Um, you can watch out, you need to watch out for some clutter and bloat. Sometimes some themes are just, you know, they just take a long time to load. So typically what I like to do is I like to take a theme, put it on uh, some slow hosting, and just run it through GTmetrics, gtmetrics.com, and just watch you know, the numbers come back. If it takes more than two seconds to load, uh, maybe not, you know, because, um, you know, People are really short on patience these days, and they won't wait for a site to load. I, I'm a lot more patient. I'll just sit there and wait, you know, put on my music. Oh, it's still loading, yeah, but whatever. <laughs> um, so also consider the color and the font. You want to make sure that that color and font have good contrast. They're easier to read. The font isn't too small. It's not of a type um, like a you know that is really narrow. That is not easy to make. You know, you want kind of bold and open fonts that are really easy to read. Um, a new thing that you might want to take advantage of is watch out for accessibility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is a new in itself. Um, accessibility has been a thing for a while. And what accessibility means is you need to build your website so that people who have visual problems or who have motor skills problems can see and click on things on your site without too much trouble, right? Um, so if I have a friend who ha is visually impaired, he, can, he can't even recognize faces. So I have to, when I walk up to him, if he doesn't recognize my voice right away, I say, hey, it's Rob. You know? <laughs> um, so, but he does use like, screen readers that you know, read out the narrator stuff. You want to make sure that your theme works with those types of technologies. Um, and the reason for that is, is if you happen to be running a business and somebody who has a disability either relies on your business or just wants to do business with you, they could sue you. <laughs> And it's actually been happening. Florida, I, just, I was reading an article just the other day, Florida and New York State lead the nation in lawsuits uh, for accessibility issues. So and in fact, there's one person here in Florida who has been just slamming businesses, like hundreds of businesses, with lawsuits. And her name is on all of them. It's a big, long list. And her name is on all of them. And she's just going through and saying, you know, I'm going to sue you, I'm going to sue you, sue you. And the best that business owners can do is just write a check. Don't try to fight it, because you won't win. You know, so if you don't want to deal with that, avoid it by you know building it. That's the right thing to do. You know, you're, first of all, you're complying with the law, right? And second of all, you're just you're gaining new customers. You're you're helping people who need it. So, um, so yeah, there's that. Um, <clears throat> um, there are tools that you can use. In fact, I'll just show you. I, I actually wrote a blog post about this the other day on my site, webatextras.com. Um, the blog is under about and then blog, but this is this article here takes you through some of the tools that you can use. So one of them is called Wave Accessibility, sorry, Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. Um, this is a really good one because it, it actually shows you in browser, puts little icons where things are bad, and there'll be red icons, so you, you'll know red is bad. And you click on it, and it tells you, you know, here's what you need, here's the the thing you're not complying with. You know, talk to a developer, get it fixed, or you know, fix it yourself. Um, this one here is pretty good. <coughs> it actually walks you through three different levels. Sort site is what it's called. It'll, it'll scan through your whole site. If you have a subscription with them, it's 49 bucks a month. It'll scan through your whole site, and it will say on the A level, I think it's, hang on a sec. 
most difficult to use is the A level and least difficult to use is the AAA level. So if you're AAA, you're good. It's just like you know, roadside assistance, right? We're good, right? So if, uh, if you're AAA, that means you're mostly in compliance. You know, there's probably a couple issues, but you're good to go, right? If you're A, eh, you might wanna look at it and, and do some more fixes. So sort site's really good that way. Um, it, it actually links you to every single you know, published standard and what that means and what you should do to fix it and why it's, a, why it's important. Um, and then at the bottom here, we have the W3C Web Accessibility Initiatives Tools list. This is a massive list, 128 different tools that the W3C, which is the standards body for the web, HTML and everything, um, that they've published. And it has a filter down the side where you can, you know, let me just blow this up a little bit here. Um, so it has a filter down the side here where you can choose you know, if you happen to be Japanese and you're trying to do accessibility in Japanese, you know, you can choose those tools that'll help you with that. Different languages and so on and so forth. So you can narrow it down to like 17 and then pick the ones that you, you, you need to, but it'll just run, through, run your site through it and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. So things are getting so much easier than they used to be. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, and then finally, test, test, and test some more. That's, that's the big thing. You know, just make sure that you're running your site through all kinds of scenarios, make sure that it works on a mobile device, mobile responsive, I think that's one of these. Yeah, I already went past it. Did I already get that in there? Huh, I didn't put mobile responsive in there. Well, anyway, yeah, look for a mobile responsive theme. Oh, there it is, get, get, a, get a responsive theme. Mobile responsive means that you don't have to do anything special to it, it just when they narrow the window down to a, to a phone size, tablet size, everything just kind of locks into place and goes where it's supposed to go, right? Cool. So why, why would you want to pay for a theme? There's a lot of free themes out there. Why would you want to pay? Well, premium themes, you get support, right? Because they're getting money, and then you know, for your money, you should get some support for that. Uh, premium themes do provide funding for the developer to improve the theme, whereas the free themes, sometimes it'll just be a developer exercise where they're just playing around, and they'll push, pu push it out as a theme, and then they never touch it again, and you're stuck. <laughs> so premium themes, I recommend that you buy one. Um, custom themes give you exactly what you need and nothing you don't. So a custom theme is basically you have nothing and you, have, you hire a developer and they, or you do it yourself, and you, they build you a theme from scratch using ACF, like you were mentioning, uh, advanced custom fields or other tools. But for the most part, you're, getting, you're going from nothing to your own custom theme built exactly how you need it. This is the best way to go if you're looking for speed, performance, security, no malware, living up to all the standards, accessibility, and all that kind of stuff, so. Market too, so you don't look exactly like everybody. Exactly, yep. Now the page builders can make it so you don't look like everybody else, but it is a separate, you know, premium theme that, you know, it is built from, from scratch, so. There are purists, that, you know, I've, I've met a, a bunch of them where they're like, I only build custom themes. Don't ever buy a theme from anybody, always build custom. Okay, that works for some people, but you know, some people don't have $3,200 to $10,000 to drop on a custom theme. So, um, so it just depends on, on what you're into, what your budget's like, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, the custom themes are a great way to go. Yeah? It links to, it helps to rent the website, website and search engines. Yes, so um, certain themes are built to rank better than others. Um, it just depends on what you're doing with the site, for example. Your, your content is the first thing that you should care about. Um, but themes can help. Right, like if they publish rich snippets, which is kind of like taking, like if you ha if you're a restaurant, and you have a menu, you have a, a, a an item like a food item and a price. It separates those two entities out, food item and price, and then Google can kind of understand that this is the price for a meal. And then if somebody Google's for what does it cost for a grilled cheese sandwich at this restaurant, it'll pop it right to the top, and it'll understand what a price is and stuff. So it's, it, that's called semantics. Like what is the meaning of a piece of information? So you want to get a theme that is semantically built so that, it, that search engines can better understand. And custom theme is better than... Yeah, if you do a custom theme, you're in control of everything. So yeah, whatever you, whatever you want to do, do it the right way, you're good to go. So yeah, that's another reason to use a custom theme for sure. Yep. Um, <clears throat> also, custom themes will provide exclusivity, like you were saying. Bingo! Mind reader. <laughs> right here. Yep. Uh, so your site doesn't look like anybody else's, you know, and stuff like that. So um, now there is some licensing uh, around themes. Uh, I think most WordPress stuff needs to be GPL, which is the new public license 
Um, so whatever you release into the community, it has to be something that somebody could fork and do their own thing with. So a copy of a copy of a theme where somebody said, oh, this is a great theme, I'm gonna make my own and do it, another thing with it and sell it. So a lot of things are like derivative works, right? Um, but that's kind of the point of open source software, right? If it ever became locked down and proprietary, then it wouldn't be any more fun, you know? <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do cool stuff. All right. So child themes and how to make them. All right. So the customizer, which is that uh, side menu thing that when you, when you go to appearance, customize in, in WordPress, pops up on the left and you can like change things and see what it does to your site. That doesn't always change everything, right? You have to add, <laughs> yeah. You have to add things to the customizer. It's, a, it's an affirmative action. If, it, if you want it in there, you have to make it and put it in there. And some themes only have very, very minimal stuff in them. So sometimes you want to make a theme behave a certain way, but if you upgrade that theme, you lose all of your work. So they came up with the notion of child themes, right? A child theme kind of branches your parent theme and ju it does just, the, just certain things for you. So Without a child theme, like I just said, changes to templates and style sheets will disappear when you update the theme files. With child themes, you get more precise changes in full control. It's almost like you're, you're building a custom theme based on somebody else's theme. So, and the sky is really the limit with, with child themes. So basically what you're doing, where's my little pointer here? So <coughs> with, here's, you know, WordPress first looks, the WordPress management system, it says, okay, I've got all this content, how do you want me to display it, right? So WordPress says, okay, well, I see you have a child theme folder, and it looks for the files in the child theme folder first, and then if it doesn't find what it's looking for here, it says, all right, well, well does the parent theme have it, right? Parent theme doesn't, that doesn't have it, then it won't do anything with it. So first it looks here, then it looks here. If you don't have a child theme, it always looks, obviously, just at the parent theme. So the child theme is kind of an intermediate, uh, intermediate step so the way this works is the style.css style file is where you put all of your bold and you know, uh, text color and you know, your, if you're making columns, you know, columns and rows and things like that, all of the styling of, of your content to make it look pretty, that's all stored or should be stored in your style.css. Now the customizer stores all that in the database, which makes me nervous. <laughs> I like things to be in the file <laughs> um, for two reasons. Number one, I like to use code versioning, like Git, GitHub. Um, I use Pantheon for my hosting for, for WordPress. Yes, <laughs> found him. <laughs> Another fan, all right, excellent. So you and I need to talk. <laughs> so yeah, um, so, so yeah, Pantheon uses uh, versioning with Git and that makes it so that whatever changes you make, you can always roll them back. You, get, you can you know, just version your files so that you can always have a fallback in case something goes wrong. So I, I like to do that. Um, putting it in the customizer and it lands in the database kind of, you know, as the database crashes, there go your styles. So yeah, style.css, it overrides and adds to, if you're in 2017 as your, as your theme, it overrides and adds to style.css, right? So this has the bulk of what your site is doing to display stuff. This has just the customizations you've made. You don't want to copy this whole file over to here and then make your changes. Just do your, only, your own changes in this file. It may be just one line. You know, just one style color change, something. Um, same thing with the screenshot that represents your uh, theme in the themes list, right? You st uh, the screenshot.png that's gets replaced with the child theme. So, yeah? So a lot of themes have what you were saying under uh, the customization mm -hmm. section for doing custom CSS. Mm -hmm. So we did not use that and we put it in styles.css yeah. instead? Yeah. And th the reason that's in the customizer is for convenience. Because not everybody has access to SFTP to go and, and, and change things you know, in the file. So they, they put it in there for a convenience for users who are minimally so proficient and, and yeah, quick and dirty, get it done, you know, stuff like that. And sometimes I'll do that if I'm prototyping. But once I'm done, I'll take that and I'll drag it, I'll, I'll copy and paste it into the style that CSS. I'll, but you have to remove it from the customizer or you'll get inheritance issues. Um, but yeah, so exactly, yeah. Um, so, yep. So we'll move on to the next slide here. So there's two ways to do this. The easy way is to use a plugin called Child Theme Configurator, right? You install the plugin, you just search it up in the, in the plugin database, you install it and you activate it, and then you configure it using the defaults, which is fine for most sites. I, 
it literally, I love going in there and doing that because I just turn it on, I go in there, I hit a couple buttons, it runs through, creates my child theme, and I'm done, right? I just activate my child theme and I'm good to go. And then from there I can make my changes. Yes? Does that work with, say, an active site that you've already developed? Will it still build you a child theme? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now on Pantheon, <laughs> It's a little different because the, the live site is not writable because it's so secure, they, they lock it down. So with, with Pantheon, it's a little bit of a challenge because you have to do everything on the, on the dev site and then push all of your content through to the live site. So if you're going to use Child Theme Configurator, start building your site and, and make your content live. I'm just curious. Yeah. I actually use WDHDLI. Yeah. Line. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just curious if you could do this with that's already established. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've added child theme configurator to sites that already exist. Yeah. Uh, again, but the challenge on Pantheon is you have to put the live site in maintenance mode, clone it down to dev, and then push it all live. Push the staging over. Exactly, which is not something you usually do. But yeah, so, uh, but if you're on just traditional hosting that's not Pantheon, um, you, can, you can pop that child theme configurator right on your site and run it, and it will just swap over to your child theme, and then you can do your development. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's the easy way. Now the hard way. <laughs> okay, so the hard way is this way, uh, manually. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get in. This freaks a lot of people out. They go, nope, I'm going to go back to the other way. <laughs> but if you're comfortable here, you know, this is kind of fun. So you go into WP Content Themes, right? And then whatever your child theme is going to be named. So if, I, if I'm running 2017, 2015, 2016, whatever, so that's my parent theme. I'm going to name my child theme something similar to that. I usually choose like the parent theme name dash child as the, the theme name, the child theme name. So I create that new child theme folder. Right? It's really empty. There's nothing in there, right? So the next thing I do is I create a style.css and a functions.php file inside. This is an example of a, a child theme called resca-child. So some parent theme named resca. They created a resca-child um, child theme folder, and then they put in blank functions.php and style.css files. So there's nothing in those either to start out. Hang on, i got to get a drink. <laughs> All right. So now we're at this stage. Now, you could activate that theme at this point and be good to go, right? Because if there's nothing in here, it's just going to look in the parent, right? It's just going to grab whatever's in the parent. So. The next step is you want to copy and paste the header from the parent theme style.css. Oh, I lied. You have to do this first, sorry. Uh, copy and paste the header from the parent theme style.css to child style.css. So you're going to, at the very top of the parent theme style file, you're going to see this you know, comment, right? This, this right here means open comment and comment. And then inside of here is just kind of metadata about your theme. So it has a name, a description, the author, the author's URL, the template, which is the original parent um, theme uh, folder name. So that's, that's the name of the folder, so it knows where to look. And then you just give it a version number, right? These are all convenient, so that it shows up on the interface in, in WordPress. So the description is helpful because if you need to tell people, this is a child theme, this is why I built it, you can put a whole novel in here if you want to. Um, yeah? Am I correct in assuming that <coughs> really the only thing that's absolutely required is the template? Yeah. So Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I include all of it just because I want well, it to look yeah, presentable. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely needs to know the template. Yeah, because it needs to know what the parent is. Yep. All right, so then you modify the pasted header with a new name description, to, you know, okay, all that stuff. So then um, you add only your custom styles to the styles.css of the child theme. So down here I've made the paragraph, or you know, any, anything in a paragraph tag needs to be color white. So let's the, re the only reason I would do that is if I had a, a darker background. So my next line is going to be, you know, the body background color needs to be a darker color. Otherwise, it's going to be white text on white. <laughs> exactly. So um, this is where I can make all those changes. And sometimes these are two, three lines. Sometimes it's on how much customization you're doing on your style, right? So there's that. All right. So now, um, part of how WordPress loads style sheets and other things, other resources, is it's called enqueuing. Now the old way to, to load style.css was you would import the default parent styles using the at import URL equals in the style.css file. 
The problem with this is that it is kind of slow. Um, it takes up a little bit more server resources and slows down your site a little bit. The new way is to use functions.php and what you're going to do is you're going to use the PHP language on the server, the app server that runs WordPress, 